Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 902. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about five of Jeff Bezos' best lessons for success from his 27 years as Amazon CEO. Now, some people love Jeff Bezos, some people don't like Jeff Bezos, but no matter which camp you're in, I had to agree that these five lessons that he talked about had a lot of wisdom in them, and I thought they were worth sharing with you. The article comes to us from CNBC, and it was written by Tom Huddleston Jr. And it says, Monday marks Jeff Bezos' final day as the CEO of Amazon, the company he launched in 1994 as an online bookseller that is now an e-commerce behemoth worth $1.7 trillion, the company that has made him the richest person in the world with a nearly $200 billion fortune. Over Bezos' roughly 27 years as CEO, he regularly shared advice and lessons learned in interviews and his annual letters to Amazon shareholders. Here are some of the best examples of what Bezos, 57, has shared over the years. Number one, take risks. When you think about the things that you will regret when you're 80, they're almost always the things that you did not do. They're acts of omission. Very rarely are you going to regret something that you did that failed and didn't work or whatever, Bezos said in a 2018 interview. And I just want to pause there and say, I remember doing a podcast about that and how he used that visualization to help him make decisions in his life. And that was one of the reasons that he decided to start Amazon and move across the country to Seattle and begin his business there. So if you haven't checked out that podcast, it is Be Wealthy and Smart podcast number 411, which is over on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. The article goes on to say that philosophy helped shape Bezos's life before he even launched Amazon. When he was just 30 years old, Bezos had a Wall Street job at hedge fund D.E. Shaw, but he saw promise in the future of the internet company and got the idea to build a bookstore online. Bezos' boss agreed the idea had potential, but he still tried to convince Bezos that it would be less of a risk to keep the job he had. I pictured myself at 80 years old thinking back on my life in a quiet moment of reflection, Bezos said of that moment in his life during a 2020 fireside chat in India. Would I regret leaving this company in the middle of the year and walking away from my annual bonus? Of course, Bezos decided to go for it and he moved across the country to start Amazon out of a garage in Seattle suburbs in the summer of 1994. The website went live a year later on July 16, 1995. I didn't think I'd regret trying and failing, and I suspected I would always be haunted by a decision to not try at all, Bezos said in 2018. So he took the less safe path to follow my passion, and I'm proud of that choice. Picturing yourself as an 80-year-old looking back on your life and the choices you might regret also works for personal decisions, Bezos added. I'm not just talking about business things, he said. It's like, I love that person and I never told them. And you know, 50 years later, you're like, why didn't I tell her? Why didn't I go after it? So that's the kind of life regret that is very hard to be happy about when you're telling yourself in a private moment that story of your life. So I want to pause there and just say, I completely agree. It's the things that you don't do that you regret. What I like also about this part where he talks about taking risks is he said he didn't think he would regret trying and failing. And so often I think we are scared to fail. I know a lot of people who want to do things, but they're just so afraid of failure. 
And I love the fact that he decided in his mind he would be much better off trying and failing than not trying at all. I think that's something we can all learn from. Number two, make good decisions fast. Bezos believes that the key to maintaining an innovative business is to make high quality, high velocity decisions. In his 2015 letter to Amazon shareholders, Bezos wrote about the importance of speed and nimbleness in making Amazon a large company that's also an invention machine. While he admits that some decisions are irreversible or nearly irreversible, most are not. Most decisions are changeable, reversible. They're two-way doors, he wrote. In those cases, when you make a decision that is suboptimal, according to Bezos, You don't have to live with the consequences for that long. You can reopen the door and go back through. Those types of decisions should be made quickly, according to Bezos. Otherwise, he wrote, people or companies that spend too much time deliberating over reversible decisions risk being subject to slowness, unthoughtful risk aversion, failure to experiment sufficiently, and consequently diminished invention. All of my best decisions in business and in life have been made with heart, intuition, guts, not with analysis, Bezos said in an interview at the Economic Club in Washington, D.C. in 2018. So I want to pause there and say, isn't that interesting? We are taught to analyze everything to death, to look at spreadsheets, to look at the numbers, to make the decisions based on that. And he's saying just the opposite. And I have to say, I agree. What I like about this part that he talks about is he saying you can head out in one direction and if you realize it's the wrong direction, you can always turn and go a different way. And there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you have to pivot, sometimes you have to punt. It's just the way life is. And thinking that you set out your goals and they're all gonna be in a straight line and work out exactly as planned, I think that is setting us up for failure to expect that that is the way that life works. It doesn't. You head out on a trip, you take a wrong turn, you self-course correct and get back on the right road. That's just the way life is. And if we're afraid to take risks, if we're afraid to try new things, if we're too tied into numbers, I think that's doing us a disservice. Number three, finding your calling. Figuring out your passion in life is a central point in the advice that Bezos says he most often gives to his younger employees as well as his four children, the billionaire said at the George W. Bush Presidential Center's Forum on Leadership in 2018. You can have a job, or you can have a career, or you can have a calling, Bezos said. And if you can somehow figure out how to have a calling, you've hit the jackpot because that's the big deal. In other words, finding a way to make a career out of your passion is Bezos' idea of true success, and he believes that everyone has a passion. You don't choose your passions, your passions choose you, he said at the time. All of us are gifted with certain passions, and the people who are lucky are the ones who get to follow those things. While Bezos has said he followed his passion as a garage inventor when he launched Amazon, in recent years the billionaire admitted that his real lifelong passion has been space. Ever since I was five years old, that's when Neil Armstrong stepped onto the surface of the moon. I've been passionate about space, rockets, rocket engines, space travel, he said in 2019. Bezos' high school graduation speech even mentioned his plans to one day build space colonies. Bezos has spent billions of dollars funding his space company, Blue Origin, and one of his first orders of business after stepping down as Amazon CEO will be to fly on the company's first passenger space flight with his brother on July 20th. So I wanna pause there and say I completely agree that if you can figure out your life purpose or your passion and follow those, create a business out of it or a side hustle, you are really better off because you're gonna be happy doing what you do every single day and it's not going to feel like work and it's going to be a lot easier to create success than someone who's trudging along at something they really hate to do. Number four, embrace the inefficiency of wandering. In his 2018 letter to Amazon shareholders, Bezos included a section titled, Intuition, Curiosity, and the Power of Wandering. In that section, the Amazon CEO wrote about the importance of setting aside time to explore your curiosity in order to come up with new innovative solutions to challenges. 
Amazon's business may depend on efficiency, with customers ordering almost any product and expecting it delivered to their door within a few days or less. But Bezos believes that a healthy dose of inefficiency is necessary to succeed. In the letter, he describes this as wandering or exploring and experimenting, even if it means taking a roundabout path to a solution. Wandering is an essential counterbalance to efficiency, he said. You need to employ both. Sometimes, often actually in business, you do know where you're going, and when you do, you can be efficient. Put in place a plan and execute, Bezos wrote in the letter. In contrast, wandering in business is not efficient, but it's also not random, he continued. It's guided by hunch, gut, intuition, curiosity, and powered by a deep conviction that the prize for customers is big enough that it's worth being a little messy and tangential to find our way there. According to Bezos, one of the lessons he learned building Amazon was that success can come through iteration. Invent, launch, reinvent, relaunch, start over, rinse, repeat, again and again, he wrote, adding that the path to success is anything but straight. So in that section, I really like the fact that he gives you permission to wander, to try new things, to course correct. Again, he's telling us life isn't perfect. You just have to go out and try it. If that doesn't work, try something else. If that doesn't work, try something else. And keep trying until you succeed. We've heard that from other successful people, and I tend to think that that's true. I keep reminding myself about Thomas Edison, who failed over 2,000 times inventing the light bulb, and people called him a failure, and he said, no, I just learned 2,000 ways not to create a light bulb. Number five, don't lose your distinctiveness. In April, in his final letter to shareholders as Amazon CEO, Bezos wrote about the importance of holding on to your originality. We all know that distinctiveness, originality, is valuable, Bezos wrote, We are all taught to be yourself. What I'm really asking you to do is to embrace and be realistic about how much energy it takes to maintain that distinctiveness. The world wants you to be typical in a thousand ways. It pulls at you. Don't let it happen. Bezos went on to say that it's worth it to maintain your distinctiveness, even though it requires continuous hard work. The fairy tale version of the advice, be yourself, is that all the pain stops as soon as you allow your distinctiveness to shine. That version is misleading. Being yourself is worth it, but don't expect it to be easy or free, Bezos wrote. He will transition to be executive chairman of Amazon's board and has said he is moving on to focus on projects like Blue Origin. End of article. Well, that last bit of advice was a good one, but it's also difficult because... Sometimes we're told to be ourselves, but a lot of times we're told to be somebody else or be like other people or to blend in more and not be distinctive. So I agree with him that it's not easy, it's not free, but to embrace your originality and what makes you you, I think is very empowering. And I think ultimately it's the only way to really be happy, to find the things that make you happy, to follow those things. And whatever that means to you is the path you should be on. I will post a link to this article in the show notes in case you want to read it and review it for yourself. I think there are a lot of pieces of gold in here that Jeff shared with us. It's not often that we get to hear advice from one of the richest people in the world, but when we do, I like to share it with you. So again, I want to remind you that I have more podcasts over at lindapjones.com forward slash podcast because Apple Podcasts only handles the last 300 podcasts, and I have many more than that over on my page. And you can search for the topic that you like in the search bar. So you can put in Bezos, or you can put in Mindset, or you can put in Wealth Building, or whatever topic you want to know more about, and it will pull up all of my podcasts that apply to that. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.